Hey, I'm Pastor Alex Hamai of Battle Creek Church. I want to welcome you to part three uh, of our sermon summaries uh, for our reset uh, series through the book of Acts. It's a study in the book of Acts. And uh, today, we're going to be looking at the third chapter of Acts. So if you've got a Bible, open it now to Acts chapter three. And we are exploring this idea of how we truly have no idea of what God is up to. So, so let's pick up uh, in, in verse 1 of chapter 3 of Acts, and let's read it together. It says, And Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. Now, one thing to keep in mind is why were they going there? Was this just a normal part of their worship? Uh, are, are they still in the old worship even though they followed Jesus and, and, and now have the Holy Spirit? Or maybe, uh, just as Jesus has said in Acts 1-8, you will start in Jerusalem being my witness. Maybe they're starting in Jerusalem. Judea, uh, Jerusalem is the capital uh, of this area and of Judaism, the temple is the capital. So they're going to start right there in the most strategic point and place in this whole story. Uh, but they're going to take part in this prayer service. As they approach the temple, a lame man from birth uh, was carried in. He was laid there. Now, this is a regular occurrence, as we'll see. Each day, he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate. Circle that word beautiful in your Bible. So that he could beg uh, from the people going into the temple. Maybe he's taking advantage of their guilt or, 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 or you know, them wanting to get right with their maker. Uh, maybe they'll be generous. When, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for uh, some money. Now, the first thing that I want to point out to you is this. We have no idea how God wants to interrupt our plans. When, when we live a life led by the Spirit, not only are we open to these interruptions, we are actively looking for these interruptions, asking God on a regular basis, what are you doing today, God? What are you doing in here, God? What is happening in your agenda uh, that I'm looking for an opportunity to be the miracle in, in that day? And often we miss it because we are more committed to our schedules, our agendas, our biases, and, and all the other things that we are so committed to uh, in, in our lives. Look, look at verse 4, uh, if you will. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. I mean, he's, he's demanding the attention of this guy. The lame man looked up at them eagerly, expecting some uh, money. V verse 6, but Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Now watch this. I, I don't have silver and gold. First of all, sometimes God uses what we don't have to set us up for amazing things. So, sometimes our inadequacy, sometimes our uh, falling short or, or not being able to fund something is actually a blessing from God. But in this particular instance, this gate called beautiful is covered with silver and gold. And, and, and there's Peter saying, hey, all of this, silver and gold, this this." religion. I don't have any of it. But, but what I do have, a relationship with Jesus, I'm about to give you. Th this man was expecting some financial assistance, but God wanted to make him whole. And he used Peter and John to do it. A and in our day, people all around us are looking for help, but God wants to make them whole. Now, we should always help when we can, but that help should never come without offering an opportunity for wholeness in Jesus Christ, which leads me to my second point, which is we have no idea what it is that God has given us. We have no idea because much of the time we're so concerned with what we don't have. Uh, we believe that we don't have anything to offer, so we don't offer anything. And, and we're often focused on what we don't have, but God wants us to focus in on what he has given us and, and his son Jesus and realize that that's enough. You remember God's question to Moses is, what is that in your hand? I, I think on a regular basis, God is asking us as his children, what is that in your hand? J just trust me with what it is you do have so, so that I can get your hands open and, and can give you something else. I, I want you to know that you, you might not have all the answers, but as a child of God, you 
do have the answer. You, you, you might not have the solution, but you do have the solution. The, the answer and the hope in all situations, child of God, listen, lives inside of you. And his name is Jesus. And, and so let's look at verse 7, if we can. Then Peter took the lame man uh, by the right hand and helped him up. As he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Verse 8 says he jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, then leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with uh, them. Now, now let's look closely at what's happening here. It, It says that Peter took the lame man by the hand. And and as he took him by the hand to lift him up, his feet and his ankles were instantly healed and and strengthened. Now, they had to be atrophied, right, from all kinds of lack of use. Uh, Peter told the man to get up, and then he reached down uh, to help him up. Now, keep in mind, this is not someone whose legs had fallen asleep. It's not someone who had fallen down. This is someone who was lame from birth. And Peter knows this, and still he he reaches out his hand to pull him up. Now, Now, some biblical commentary suggests that in this moment, Peter was given the gift of faith which is an extraordinary measure of faith that God uses to show his power in ways that create joy and encouragement for others and ultimately bringing glory to God. But basically, Peter is led by the Spirit to express his faith through action. And what I want you to see is that we have no idea what miracles are on the other side of us following the lead of the Holy Spirit. There's always something waiting on the other side of our obedience. Now, in verses 9 through 15... Uh, uh, Luke goes on to talk about how many people recognize this man as the beggar who was at the gate every day. And and now they see him leaping and jumping and praising God. He's hanging out with Peter and John and and, and people uh, begin to gather around them. There is this astonishment that now has drawn a a crowd. And, and, And it says that Peter saw his opportunity. He didn't miss the opportunity. He addressed the crowd. Outpouring always creates opportunities. Uh, The purpose of the Holy Spirit, listen, is to lift up Jesus always. And, And sometimes we're asking God for opportunities to spread the gospel when maybe what we should be asking for is a fresh outpouring of his Holy Spirit on our lives daily. We have no idea what opportunities God is wanting to create from the pouring out of his spirit on our lives. Now, he goes on to say, what what, what is so surprising about this, guys? What's so surprising about this miracle? I I believe he was addressing us in our day uh, to say and to address what a normal Christian life should look like, that every miracle that comes should lead to the message. When when, when we participate in a miracle, when we see a miracle, when we're the recipient of a miracle, it should lead to us uh, declaring the message of Jesus Christ. And, And he states to the crowd again, just to remove any And all doubt about it. Look look at verse uh, 16. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed. And and you know how crippled he was before. Uh, Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. So so with the few minutes that I have left, let, let me summarize four key points for you today out of this chapter in the book of Acts. Number one, we have no idea how God wants to interrupt our plans. Number two, we have no idea what it is that God has already given us. Uh, number three, we have no idea what miracles God wants to do through us. And then lastly, number four, we have no idea how God wants to use us to lift up Jesus. And so as we close today, let me ask you some final questions. When was a time that God interrupted your plans? When was a time that God interrupted your plans? And when you pray for miracles, are you surprised when they happen or do you expect them? Do you walk in faith? 
What are some opportunities you've taken advantage of to share the gospel? In other words, the window opened and you went through it to share uh, the gospel. Now, let me just say to you today, as you ponder these questions, think through these questions, we're praying God's blessing on you. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you want the full message, uh, visit our YouTube channel or just click the link. Uh, God bless you.